Camel is a tool for deploying your web applications anywhere. Whether you're using cloud VMs or your own hardware, Camel makes it really easy to deploy new versions of your applications. It has built-in zero downtime deploys. It can do rolling restarts. It even does asset bridging and all sorts of other fancy things that you need to deploy a modern web application. Kamal was originally built for our move out of the cloud at 37signals. We moved Hey.com and a bunch of other applications out of the cloud and onto our own hardware. But it works just as well even if you're just getting started and you want to get started with those cloud VMs. You can use any cloud VM provider and retain the same toolkit whether you're jumping from one provider to another or if you are ready to move on to your own hardware. It is much easier to have an exit strategy if you're using a tool like Kamal. In our case, that meant saving a whole lot of money moving out of the cloud. But the key point with Kamal is really to have the flexibility that a simple tool that doesn't require a PhD in Kubernetes will allow you to do the basic work of getting your application updated. Kamal is built on top of Docker and SSH and a bit of Ruby to tie it all together. It is not a complicated tool. You can read through the source and understand what is going on, yet it is really everything you need. We're deploying seven applications using Kamal at 37 Singles at the moment and converting all our legacy Capistrano applications to Kamal in the near future. So let me show you how it all works with a quick demo where we will build a basic blog and deploy it to two different cloud providers. We're going to build our basic block on top of Rails 7.1 with MySQL and Tailwind. We're going to go into this jump and we're going to generate a basic scaffold here. It's just going to have a title and a content to set up a interface that we can use. Let's get the database created and migrated so that this is added and ready to go, all just locally at the moment. We're going to um, assign this to the root of the application so that we can access it directly on uh, port 3000. Let's create a quick post here to see that everything is working locally. You can see that it is. This is basically all we needed. Oh yeah, we have this uh, slash up where we will point our load balances to that will return a green color and the error code 200 okay if everything is going fine. This is what the load balancer can use when we are deploying new versions to know that everything is running with the latest version and safe to switch over. So. We will set up a set of um, VMs here on Hetzner. We're going to use three of them. We're going to use one for the database and two for app servers. You can see we'll just create three of the same basic VMs here, set them up, get them generated on Hetzner. Um, as you can see, we have uh, three IP addresses right here that's going to be ready to use in our configuration file for um, Kamal. We're also going to set up a load balancer between the two app servers so that we can point a single domain to a single IP. It's going to check on that up that I just showed you before to make sure that everything is up and available. And now we're going to initialize Kamal. Kamal can either be installed from a Ruby gem or tied up to a Docker command. Here we're using the Ruby gem. It's generating a handful of files, mainly the config slash deploy YAML, which is the one we're going to change. The n file, which is where we're going to store our environment variables and tokens. And finally, a set of hooks that I'm going to show you at the end of this video. So if we take a look at this uh, deploy YAML file, you can see here there is a service declaration, images, servers, registry, all the things you need to tell Kamal where are you hosting your containers and where do you deploy your applications to. So if we change that out to be a blog and we have my username against Docker Hub, we have a place to put it. We're going to uh, take some of these commented out sections and stick them into the real deploy YAML configuration here, there's going to be a Rails master key secret. If you use a different framework, you might have another type of secret that you need to inject. All these secrets are coming from the .n file, which is where we're going to set them up in just a second. Um, and then we have a clear environment variable with the DB host that we will use to point the application servers to the database. We also have that root password for MySQL as we're setting it up. We're just going to use a standard MySQL 8 image that can be auto-configured on boot. Um, 
It has a description here where you can see that we could uh, import a production config file. We're not going to even bother with that. We're just going to keep the defaults. But what we are going to bother with is putting in our IP addresses for the two app servers and then putting in the IP address for the database. As you can see, it needs to go in two places. It both needs to be inside of Kamal. So Kamal knows where to deploy the database accessory and it needs to be injected into the application VM so that they know where to access that database. All right, we are also going to bootstrap this new database with production.sql. This is a file we can generate inside of our application and change it there. For now, all we need to do is actually just um, create the database itself. It's going to be blog underscore production matching the Rails defaults. The MySQL 8 um, database, when it's booted, will run these files just once to initialize the database and then we can run our migrations to add the tables that we need for the database itself. All right, we also need to configure the uh, production settings for the database in Rails. We're gonna point it to that DB uh, host and we're gonna reference the, um, the password we had. Then we're gonna jump into the .n file, which is where we're gonna set up the tokens that we need. We have the Rails master key that I just copied over from the config slash master key. We're gonna put that in here and then we're also going to add a root password that's just auto-generated for MySQL that is going to be both the password used to bootstrap the MySQL um, instance that we set up under accessories and it's also going to be the password we give to Rails so that it has access to it. And then finally, you have to change the Camel registry password. I'm not gonna post my password token in here, but you have to change that. If you use Duggar Hub, you can generate a token and put it in there. The same with any other register that you use. Just make sure, of course, that after you've updated this, you make sure that you have a Docker ignore file where you are ignoring um, the end file. You do not want to check those tokens into your version control system. So in Docker ignore and in git ignore, we make sure that the environment file is ignored. Instead of having a straight .env file, you'd also have a .env template. Uh, here's an example of using one password as the secret store, and then you can use the command Kamal Envify to take that template that you can check into uh, version repository and generate the .env file that you actually use to deploy. These .env files are pushed to the servers uh, as part of setup, but then if you change them in the future, you have to do Kamal env push to push the new envs to uh, the different servers. What's nice about that is that not everyone on your team might need to have access to these tokens and you can therefore just update the environment files from the machine that does have access when you need to. But let one final thing before we start deploying here, we just need to hop into the Rails production configuration where by default Rails 7.1, at least at the moment, has force SSL on. We're gonna deploy without SSL for a moment while I show you just how the basic works and then we're gonna turn it back on a little later. So let's turn that off and then we can check the whole repository into Git and we can do our setup. So as you can see here, Kamal is doing the setup against these IP addresses on the app servers and on the database servers that we configured. It's ensuring that Docker has been installed. Uh, in this case, it has not been installed because these are fresh VMs, so it will install Docker on those machines, and after it's done installing, it'll proceed with the rest of the deploy. I have sped this up somewhat. In the first deploy, we are using Docker locally um, to build with Quemu. Uh, this means that we're using a uh, Apple Silicon chip to build for Intel. That takes a little while. In fact, I think in this case, it takes about four minutes the very first time you do it when the caches are cold. But after the caches are hot, it goes much, much faster. And in production, you can actually use a remote built instance on an Intel machine so it goes at full speed. We're doing deploys at 37 signals in between 20, 30, or 40 seconds to get everything set up. As you can see here too, when we are deploying, we're doing all these retries to make sure that the container is actually ready to serve traffic. We have a whole little dance with a cord file and so forth to ensure that zero downtime deploys are successful every time and that we never lose a request to a 500. All right, now we have set everything up and we have our load balancer ready. We can 
hit that load balancer and create a new post on the application actually running on Hetzner, the three VMs we have set up, two for the app and one for the database. And as you can see here, when we create one, it has been successfully created. Go back and see the index. Everything is working in production. Of course, as you can see up there, it is saying not secure. We're not running on SSL yet. We are just running over HTTP, hitting that load balancer that then hits the app servers. If we make a change to the app, just a simple change here. We check that in to Git once more, and then we deploy a second time. This goes much faster. I've still sped it up here, but it is quicker to do it the second time around. You can see it took just over a minute, and this is still running through that Quemo emulation. If you run with a matching chipset, it again goes much, much faster. We can reload here and see really good posts. We made the update to our application. This is the basic workflow of Kamal. You make a change to your application, you push it out, it gets updated, no dying time, everything is ready to go. Now let's add SSL to the equation. We are going to add a subdomain onto this exit software.io domain I have. Um, we're gonna point that to the load balancer under blog. Let's access that and you can see it's exactly the same thing. Let's create a new post here and see if it works. Oh, it did not work. What is going on? Let's see what that error is generating. If we look at the inspector, we see it's a 422, hmm, unprocessable entity. Let's copy the request ID, then hop into Kamal, search for that request ID, and we will find the error code for that. So we can use Kamal also to inspect the logs that are just being logged through the normal Docker setup when you have something happening right away. As you can see right here, we completed a 422 unprocessable entity. And why is that? It is because we are submitting from HTTPS, but Rails thinks we are on HTTP and therefore there is a mismatch. So let's hop back into that production RB file to update the configuration. This was the one we changed before. We are going to force SSL on. This time, now that we have a proper domain that has an SSL certificate associated with it. And we're also going to turn on Assume SSL. This is a setting um, needed because the load balancer that we're using on Hetzler is not configured for SSL, but uh, the Cloudflare setup we are using is configured for SSL. You, of course, can also set up that you have full SSL termination between your uh, CDN, Cloudflare, and your backend. But in this simple example, we're just going to do it like this. So now that we have these set up, we will submit once again and we'll do redeploy. That's a shorter path when you don't need a little bit of housekeeping that we normally have. It goes even quicker than it did before, shaving off about seven seconds from the deploy we had before. And now we are live, can try to post again, and it'll work. Great. We have fixed the error. It has the quick turnaround. We can make a fix and we can push it out right away. All right, now let's set ourselves up with our second data center. We're gonna use DigitalOcean for this. Um, we're gonna set up exactly the same configuration as we had on Hetzner. There's gonna be three machines, block app one, two, and the DB server. They're gonna be set up in the same way. We're just waiting here to get some IP addresses um, that we can associate it with the load balancer. And then we can paste those IP addresses into a new configuration file that we're gonna create um, as a second destination, which is a term that Kamal uses for allowing you to deploy in two different places. It's gonna be deploy.do.yaml. We're gonna paste in the standard um, deploy.yaml file and we're gonna pare it down to just the points of difference, which is really the IP addresses as they are different between the two deployments. Um, as you can see here, we need nothing else because it will inherit from the deploy.yaml file, so all the other configurations will be shared between the two destinations. And that means we are basically ready to go after we've copied in the IP addresses for the database and the application. And once that's done, we can add um, the destination to um, Git, and then we can deploy with dash d dot do. So that means that we're using the do destination file, which will just look for config slash deploy dot do dot yaml and merge that into the basic deploy dot yaml. And as you can see, we're going through the same rhythm here in installing Docker since it was not already on the machines, then doing the full deploy and an entire deploy because our um, local Docker cache for building the app image was hot. It takes just two minutes so in two minutes, we have moved from Hetzner to DigitalOcean 
and are now deployed in two different data centers at the same time. This is the magic of Kamal. It is giving you an exit strategy, an easy move strategy from one deployment type to another without any reconfiguration beyond throwing in a couple of IP addresses. Great, as you can see here, the uh, load balancer has also picked up the change. We're gonna point our domain to the new setup. And as you can see, it is exactly the same as it was before. It's just running a new data center on a new database, of course. Um, here we have some other details that we can look into, Kamal commands that we can inspect our setup with. There's Kamal details, which will give us just a basic outline of what's running where. You can see we have the traffic uh, load balancer that we're using for the zero downtime deploys. It's running on its own setup. And then we have uh, the app servers and the database accessory. We can also run that against the uh, DigitalOcean destination and see we have the same things running just on different IP addresses. It is the same configuration. A different thing we can run here is an audit. Um, the audit is here run against the DigitalOcean deploy and you can see exactly what happened, who pushed what when. You see we're pushing those end files onto the servers for the first time. We're pulling down the image with a given version. We're tagging that as the latest image and we're booting the app version that fits with it. And then we're cleaning up after ourselves, taking away old containers or old images that are no longer needed. We can also run commands on these servers. Here is an example of running the Rails runner just to output the Rails version on the original Hester installation. You see we're running version 7.1 beta 1. In addition to running full commands, we can run interactive commands like a Rails console. This is starting the Rails console on the DigitalOcean side. And we can interact with our domain model like we would the Rails console in any other context. So here, if we load the first post and we update that post from the console, you can see we go back to the deployment, see the old value, then we can reload. And there we go, from the console. This is how you can interact with a production app uh, to solve issues and introspect uh, errors in your domain model and in your database. Now let's hop back to that um, installation we had on Hetzner, and then let's look at the containers we deployed to that installation. There's a variety of different uh, updates we've done here since we changed the app. We will take a, the oldest version that we did, and then we will roll back to that old version. When you do a rollback, you don't need to build the application again, and therefore you can see it could happen in just 20 seconds between doing the zero downtime deploy. And now if we go back here, it won't be really good posts. It'll just be posts as the original um, setup of the application was. So that is the rollbacks. We also have these hooks. So you can hook into the um, life cycle of Kamal. We have uh, post-deploy, pre-built, pre-connect, pre-deploy. On the post-deploy is a hook that we often use to pipe something into chat. For example, in Basecamp or another chat system, you can call in with curl or something else and you get all these values um, to give information to the rest of the team that something has been deployed. Uh, if you look at the pre-built here, this is um, a set of um, preconditions that we want to apply before we build a new image. We want to make sure, for example, that there's a clean checkout and remote is, configuration, uh, is configured. You can put in whatever you want here and Kamal will fail to uh, do the build and therefore do the deploy unless all these preconditions have been satisfied. All right, we are basically done. We can therefore proceed to remove the full Kamal installation first here on Hetzner. It's going to remove all the uh, application data and all the images that are on the server. Let's remove all of those. And then let's also remove the database and we will have cleaned up fully after ourselves and these IP addresses um, will be gone or scrubbed down to just a Docker installation. We're removing it here from DigitalOcean as well. And that is it. This is a quick tour of Kamal deploying a small but real application to two different data centers, two different cloud providers. And it is just as easy to deploy this to your own hardware if you feel up for that.